I'm Mukul, I'm a postdoc at NERSC and I'm going to be talking about my work on performance optimization for an atmospheric modeling code um, from the past year. So offshore wind turbines have a huge potential in terms of renewable power generation. At this point, we are quite good at modeling individual turbines in a uniform, unidirectional kind of a flow. But as you can ima imagine, for more effective wind farm simulations, we need to model the interactions between the atmospheric flow and the turbine. So there's the mesoscale atmosphere, and then the microscale wind turbine environment, and the process of funneling down information from the macro scale to the micro scale is called downscaling. And the physics that are important for the turbine, such as the turbulence characteristics or the kinetic energy, need to be modeled correctly during this process. So the code Energy Research and Forecasting, or ERF, we call it ERF, uh, bridges this scale gap. And it is the GPU-enabled alternative to the WRF code. It prioritizes low-level winds that are consequential for turbine performance, and then has also has models for complex terrain or offshore environments. Programmatically, the ERF code is based or built upon the AMREX framework that provides the infrastructure for block-structured uh, adaptive mesh simulations. And it also has the interface for parallelism over CPUs and GPUs. So let's, coming, uh, let's come to the ultimate question, which is how do we make the simulations run faster? And the usual approach to optimization, the first thing we hear is this cyclical approach of doing an overall profiling of the code to find the computational bottleneck and then diving into the code to do some detailed optimization. But what if there is no specific computational bottleneck? Or what if communication is cumulatively dominant over the computation? In this case, the other two approaches we could say is systematic changes to the data structures or memory management and then determining run, run time settings, for example, the optimal number of processors to run on, and so on. And my takeaway is that when communication is the main bottleneck, these approaches have a significant impact on performance. So I'll be talking about three different observations from my work during the past year. It has to do with OpenMP shared memory programming, GPU-aware MPI, and communication buffers and a separate memory pool. All of this work is heavily directed and guided by the developer team at the Center for Computational Sciences and Engineering. So let's me, let me first introduce the parallelism strategy in MREX. It uses something called an MPI plus X strategy, where the message passing interface, or MPI, is responsible for distributing work and transferring data among the different processes. For example, the two different square grids here could be assigned to different MPI processes. And then for parallelism over CPUs, MREX use, further divides the grid into regions known as tiles. For example, the blue tile or the orange tile here that can be then worked upon by different open MP threads that, share, that have shared access to a memory space and hence avoid the communication costs. The question is, how many threads per process should we use? For this, we do a scaling study over two compute nodes on Perlmutter, that is 256 cores, and we change the balance of the number of MPI processes and the number of threads to use per process. And we see that using four to eight threads per process results in about a 33% per reduction in wall time as compared to just using MPI processes. But as we use more threads, you know, we start incurring these thread syn synchronization costs that start becoming more dominant. Now from CPU parallelism, let's move on to GPUs. Here again, we have the MPI plus X strategy. But now, each MPI process is assigns work to a single GPU using the interface based on the target GPU vendor. For example, the CUDA HIP or SICL interface for NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel GPUs. Now, using the, uh, such a strategy, now each GPU thread works on a single mesh cell. So we see 
a 30 times speed up at least on Perlmutter's GPU nodes using the GPUs as compared to using all the CPUs on those nodes. But we always want to run faster and with GPUs, communication is even more of a bottleneck. Using something called GPU aware MPI, we are able to pass GPU buffers to MPI calls. But traditionally, this transfer of data between GPUs, as you can see on the left there, occurs by first staging the data on the CPU host. More recently, using NVIDIA's GPU Direct technology, the data can be transferred directly between GPUs by passing the CPU host, which is of course more efficient. So here we, uh, we have the weak scaling performance using atmospheric boundary layer simulations, which basically means that as we increase the number of GPUs in the simulation, we proportionately increase the problem size or the domain size. As you can see in the blue line there, there without GPU aware MPI, there is a big in jump in the simulation wall time going from one GPU to two to four GPUs all within a node. And then after that, going to multiple nodes, we see this ideal horizontal line. For the orange line there with these direct GPU transfers, that jump from one to four GPUs is much less. And then we see uh, another jump going to multiple nodes and a reduction of 20% in the wall times. Finally, I'd like to talk about communication buffers, which are basically a staging area for the data before it is sent to a different process. There are multiple advantages to using uh, communication buffers, but I'll talk about data aggregation here. Say you have a three-dimensional grid of data in AMREX on a specific process as I've shown here, and I've indicated the direction of contiguous data in memory. Say we want to transfer this slice of data to a different process. Now, none of the data in this uh, slice lies contiguously in memory. So what AMREX does is that it aggregates all of this data into a single one-dimensional contiguous buffer, uh, which is then sent to the target process and then unpacked. This reduces the number of mes messages drastically and saves latency costs. Another thing that AMREX does is this concept of an arena which is basically a pre-allocated memory pool. And AMREX keeps track of the portion of these memory pool, portions of these memory pool, which are being used by different buffers. This saves memory allocation costs. But what we saw is that when the same memory pool was being used by simulation data buffers, that is velocity, density, et cetera, and the communication buffers, it degraded performance for a specific application. Implementing a separate uh, memory pool, uh, a com communications arena, improve the communication cost by 20 to 200 percent, depending on the problem size. So in summary, I talked about these three different, you can call strategies to reduce communication costs. The OpenMP based shared memory programming, uh, enabling direct GPU transfers, and then finally the distinct memory pool for communication buffers. And emphasizing that these have had a more significant impact than say detailed profiling of the subroutines or kernels. So what's next in, as far as the big picture is concerned? Uh, because you know, the developer team continues to work on ERF, but what's next is this new energy earthshot research center funded by the DOE called Floating Offshore Wind Modeling and Simulation. And the aim is to create an ecosystem around modeling and simulation tools that are relevant for floating offshore wind turbines. And I personally will be working on a runtime two-way coupling between the ERF atmospheric modeling code and the ExaWind turbine modeling code. And the vision is that we can do more holistic wind farm simulations resulting in more efficient uh, design and operations of the turbines.